Elizabeth Warren does not like things she can't control, and Bitcoin irks her for obvious reasons. Now she says crypto is funding international terrorism, and she has the support of several bank CEOs. I guess the show's over. Time to pack it up. But wait, you know the Bitcoin motto, don't trust, verify. Let's spend a moment to expose some of her half-truths in an attempt to weaken your conviction for Bitcoin, the most important asset on the planet. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. It's Sir Ulrich and, surprise, surprise, the Honorable Senator Elizabeth Warren is awake and has chosen violence. A few days after a poorly scripted session of the Senate Banking Committee, she unveiled a Senate bill that would impose bank-like KYC rules on non-custodial software products. This is called the Digital Asset Anti-Money Laundering Act. While on the surface, this looks scary to see famous politicians attack Bitcoin use cases, we will grade this a yellow on the Sir Ulrich signal meter. Senator Warren is notorious for not doing comprehensive homework on the topics she injects herself into. And her narratives often come with an uncomfortable amount of political theater. Here is a prime example in the following clip. So I'd like to go down the line here. Maybe I can start with you, Mr. Shar. Do you think that crypto companies facilitating financial transactions should have to follow the same anti-money laundering rules that your bank has to follow? Absolutely, Senator. Okay, I like absolutely. Keep, let's go on down the line. Mr. Moynihan? Absolutely. If they okay. Matter. Absolutely. All right. Positively, All right. certainly. Unanimous, absolutely. All right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. All right. It's the word of the day. You know, we've got a way to do this. So I heard that Vince McMahon called DC and asked for the return of his kidnapped script writer. It actually pains me to watch this act, but I do it for you, the viewer. It's Christmas after all. This bill features a wider range of irrational constraints that would do the following. Extend the Bank Secrecy Act responsibilities, including KYC requirements to wallet providers, miners, and validators. Require money service businesses to verify customer and counterparty identities. Issue guidance to financial institutions on mitigating the risk of handling digital assets that have been anonymized using mixers. Establish an AML CFT compliance examination and review processes for money service businesses. Requiring U.S. persons transacting with a value greater than $10,000 in digital assets to file a report with the IRS. Digital asset ATM owners and administrators regularly submit and update the physical addresses of the kiosks they own. Huh. What an interesting summary of safety for the American people. Where do I quickly go to sign up for this dystopia? In this game of Monopoly, you go straight to hell. Do not pass go and do not collect $200 of expiring digital vouchers. You can work for those when you get out. Doesn't this sound like the future you always wanted? Now on Warren's website, after the summary of her bill proposal is a list of the many times positioning herself as a figure of importance within the digital asset industry. 30 distinct times in 30 months, she has used her platform to embarrass herself, her voter base, her state, and etch herself as an attempted political grifter on the wrong side of history. So what is the meaning of all of this at face value? Well, it's AML aka anti-money laundering. She says crypto is used in at least 20-something billion in illicit activities in 2022. The most widely quoted figure for the extent of money laundered has been the IMF consensus range of 2 to 5% of global GDP from a 1998 publication, and to this day that ratio is still the standard estimation. The global GDP surpassed 100 trillion in 2022 and 2023 expects another 3% gain. 
So at $103.5 trillion worldwide, it's expected that $2.1 trillion to $5.2 trillion would be considered criminal activity. But hold on, $2.1 to $5.2 trillion and $20 billion is through digital assets? Well, that's only 0.38% to 0.95% of all money laundered. Based on the reporting from the IMF, the United Nations, and the U.S. Senate Banking Committee, they have told you digital assets, which Bitcoin is their chief focus, is a problem that must be solved immediately. What about the part of the money laundered out there that isn't a relatively negligible sum, you know, like fiat currencies. I mean, they probably allow stuff in our food that has a higher chance of giving us a critical illness than Bitcoin being the medium for laundered money. Take a look at the summary data from this 2021 study by the United Nations that money laundering criminals keep 99.8% to 99.95% of all the money they launder. The, dare I say it, relatively honest banks are penalized 5.3 times more for policy violations than criminals actually being stopped in the act. Normal people are impacted 20,300% more than the alleged targets of AML. So if this doesn't work with the fiat they control, how the hell do you suppose that it would work trying to control Bitcoin? And here's something else pretty eye-opening. It's the record for bills passed of the ones that Elizabeth Warren has sponsored. 27 bills in the 114th Congress, zero passed. 80 bills in the 115th Congress, zero passed. 98 bills in the 116th Congress, zero passed. 103 bills in the 117th Congress, zero passed. 36 bills in the 118th Congress, zero passed. Now, could you imagine waking up every day knowing that you are this bad? This has to give Detroit Lions and Sacramento Kings fans some solace, but even they have turned around their success as of late. There is very little chance her bill will acquire the support it needs when you consider how much political and media support is going into Bitcoin ETFs and publicly traded miners. These institutions are pivoting to capture as much value from Bitcoin as possible. That means Swan isn't the only company where you'll hear nice things about Bitcoin. Fidelity, BlackRock, Van Eck. Do you really want to place your bet on a senator with an extremely poor record to drive consumer incentive away from these companies? Even if these companies' goals are short-term fiat gains, they have done enough research this cycle to know there's something special about Bitcoin. Look, in all seriousness, it's just not going away. And the question is not about can it be banned? Parker Lewis crushed that narrative. You should read his article, it's really good. The real question is, can she convince enough people to ban themselves from Bitcoin? Can she delay the common money saver from their destined adoption path? Can she get current Bitcoiners to stop buying or, heaven forbid, convert back to fiat? With every person she can freeze in a state of indecision, that's another person potentially locked in a future CBDC system of forever inflation. Which she said, by the way, in March of 22, that she actually wants to take place. What that banks do wrong, if you think we could improve that in a digital world, the answer is sure you could. But in that case, let's do a central bank digital currency. Are you there? Oh, for a central bank digital currency? Yeah. Yes. I think it's time for... Praxeologically speaking, man must act. There is no inaction. So are you going to let this senator convince you to act in opposition to your financial liberty and equity? A strong argument could be made that anyone watching this video that has not spent at least 20 hours on their own studying Bitcoin is stealing from their very own future. What does our Culture Corner segment say about arming yourselves with knowledge? United States Second President John Adams said, Liberty cannot be preserved without a general knowledge amongst the people who have a right and a desire to know. Moritz Wietersham, Swan Managing Director, said, The state will not adopt Bitcoin for you. 
The longer you wait and procrastinate studying Bitcoin, the longer the state will steal from you through the hidden tax of inflation, aka money printing. While it's likely this senator will never see this recording, it's nice to ponder what one would say to her about this subject face to face if they could. I would likely say, Lizzie, can I call you Lizzie? I can. Okay, great, great. This Bitcoin thing is bigger than you or me or anyone out there. It will impact people in a more positive way than any company you can think of. And while it's easy to kick it when the price is down, you may want to watch out when it goes the other way. The people on the fence that remember you as a voice that claim you can end Bitcoin will not only never forget your platform, but they will make it their own personal aim to let everyone know that you drive people away from prosperity. And in this instance, all marketing is definitely not good marketing. So you just may want to chill out on Bitcoin and let it do its own thing for your own sake. Tell Joe I said hi. Now, one thing you can say is that she does not let failure get the best of her. She tenaciously drowns out the haters and doubles down on the political cope efforts that have made for great meme content for all of Bitcoin social media. Even her letter to crypto companies demanding details on their employment of former defense and intelligent officials because the crypto lobby seems a bit out of tune with the general practices of Washington that allows industries to have outreach to the legislator. Where is her letter to Gary Gensler or Janet Yellen? You know, delayed ETFs, million dollar speaking engagements. Where is her demand for details of the defense industry revolving door? You know, as retired colonels are warmly invited to director level positions in the military industrial complex. I guess those don't matter. Why the discrepancy? Well, have you ever heard that Bitcoin is apolitical? Anything that doesn't give the elite their backdoor to personal profit, you can be sure that they will protest and protest violently. It's reassuring to know when you own the only functional bare asset in the world, Bitcoin in a state of self-custody. Then you can confidently claim, as Obi-Wan did to young Darth Vader on Mustafar, it's over, Anakin. I have the high ground. Politicians and their banker cronies will seek to use lawfare, mainstream media FUD, and even straightforward short selling to stifle Bitcoin success. But I have a secret that many people still haven't figured out after all these years. Bitcoin, Bitcoin's a honey badger, and it just doesn't give a damn who's complaining. No one to bribe, no one to kill to get your way. So the world governments and international banks who can't figure out what to do with it, here's a free tip. And you don't even need to invite me to the Met Gala. Run a node, stack sats, and please, please go create some value. You're welcome. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. I am Sir Ulrich, like my father before me. If you appreciate this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And consider Swan for your Bitcoin stacking needs.